Now today we're going to be making the sorbito pattern for those other person like myself that don't have a printer or don't have any ink. So what you'll need of course you'll need your paper. So you can be newspaper or any other paper you need a tape measure, pins, a marking tool. I have a ruler and I also have a scraper. You don't really need a scraper. I have a scrape. What you first need to realize two things about this pattern is that one it doesn't have a closure in the back which means that the neck would have to be big enough for your head to pass through and secondly I realized that the pleats in the front is sewn down so it has to be a bit more roomy on the sides to facilitate you getting into it and oh one more thing to note is that there's no darts in it so it's like a fitted tank it's just a loose fitting tank now I'm going to be making the pattern I'm going to be using my sister's measurement since I already kind of have a tank of this sort that I made back in 2011 I think far far back in the days so I'm going to use my sister's measurement to make this pattern so let's get to it alright so you need a few measurements for this pattern first you need the shoulder measurement Remember, we're making pattern, we normally make half of it, so every measurement that you have is divided by two. We need the bust measurement for both the front bust and the back. We need the arms depth, which is this measurement from your shoulder to where your, your bust starts. Of course, we need the waist measurement and the length of the tank. Wherever the tank falls, we need a measurement for that as well, so it's not too tight. And we need a nape to waist measurement so we can know exactly where in the pattern your waist is. So let's get to pattern making. Don't cut now. So first I'll square a line but you don't have to just see it everything properly aligned. So we're working on the back so this would be the center back. So the first thing we're going to measure is the shoulder and her shoulder is 14 inch so half of that would be 7 so I can mark 7 right here but given the fact that we know that nobody's shoulder is straight across we can go down to about an inch and mark the shoulder there. So right from this 90 degree angle. We can mark the the width of the the neck hole, and since it's a tank top, we know tank top. We normally have a small strap right here, so we can go about say you know, four and a half inches, and it's the back, so we go down about two or however low. If you want the tank the back to be low, you can go all the way down, but I think mm, two and a half inch is okay. And you just connect this curve line. You can either use a curve ruler or you can freehand. Yeah. The next thing we want to know is the arms depth. And her arms depth is 7 inches. So say we go down to about 7 and a half inch, right? So we'll go 7 and a half inch. We mark a line. And this is essentially, I would use this as the bust line. Now, additional measurement I also take is halfway down the arms depth. I always measure across the back. And hers is 12, which will give me oh, 6 inch. Alright, now we're at the bust line. We can measure the back bus and hers is seven inch plus I think a half inch ease would be okay since it's a tank. Or you can do one more inch um ease since it's quite loose fitting and there's no closure in the back. So half inch. So from the shoulder to this line to the bus we connect can use your curve roller but if you don't have a curve roller I'll just connect it freehand so something like that 
So next we want the nape to waist measurement. And her nape to waist measurement is 12 inches. So we mark a line there. And we mark the back of her waist, which is 11 and a half. So we call that, half of that is like six and a half. Just call it six and a half. As I said before, she's like small, so. The entire length of her tank is from the shoulder we measure, from the shoulder down. That's 22. And the measurement at the back for her is 16. And half of that would be around 8 inches. Now, the blouse doesn't have any darts. If we're making, say, a tight-fitting blouse or a stretch, we could just simply connect all the lines. But as I said before, this blouse is a loose-fitting blouse, and it has to give way for you to get into it. So, I can add, I will add an extra inch to the bottom, and then instead of marking the waist, I just connect one straight line from the bus all the way down to the end of it. And then you can just go around and then just add in your seam allowances. As you see fit. And that's essentially the back of the tank. Alright, so this is pretty much our back pattern. Now I didn't add any seam allowances to the neck or to the arm because we'll be using bias binding as is given in the instructions. So this is pretty much it. This basic tank, loose fitting tank. Now we keep the our back pattern of course close. So I've pretty much, put this one side, I've pretty much marked all the lines before that I marked. So, of course, the neck line is, will still have to be 4 inches so that the back and the front will, of course, align. <clears throat> now, for the front, now you can go down however far you want. Say you want to go down 6 inch, you want a deep neck line, or you might want to stop at about you know, 4 inch, whichever way. Just keep in mind, of course, that since there's no closure on this pattern, then your head would be able to fit in whatever measurements you made. Alright. So, alright, I'll just go down to four, around four and a half. And as normal, so we reached the front bus now, which is, you know, bigger than the back bus. And for her it's 18, half of that is 9, so we mark the 9, and I add a half inch for ease. We do the same thing we did before, just to just to connect the lines. You can use your ruler if you have one. I have one, but I don't know how many persons do, so I'll just do it freehand. So we still have our nape to waist measurement for the front, and we mark the front waist just because right so that's um eight inches plus a half inch for ease now from the pattern it is shown that there is a dart there is a bus dart so we have to put in our bus dart so let me first draw the length. So the length will be 22. Right. And as I said, bef um, said before, let's see this one. 
Oh, nine. Nine and a half. There about. I reckon make this a little bit bigger. So, ten and a half. And we connect the line. Now, the bus dart is around. Um, around one inch below so mark an inch and we're making a one inch dart or half inch dart so when the, the dart is folded it would be half inch in total so we'd have to add, we'd have to add one inch to our pattern so the half of that is right here Mm, normally, bus starts are at an angle, so we can make a, our own, how much is this, like a, probably a 45 degree angle line. I'm making a very short, um, short one, so that's around 3 inches, and then we add the 2 half inch line. I mean, making a dart is pretty simple. Now, we just took up one inch of our pattern for our dart. So, if we're supposed to fold in our dart at the exact 22 length that we measured for the back, then the front of our pattern would be one inch shorter. So, I would fold in the dart. So, I fold along the dart line, which is the center line, and I match these lines together. So, I just removed half an inch or essentially one inch sorry from my pattern I put the back one on top of it and I mark my new line which is down here this line that I cross out and that would essentially be the line that I draw for the front of my pattern for it to match so that's the bus dart. The next thing on the pattern that we saw was um, there was a pleat in the front. It's a box pleat and as was said before the box pleat is stitched down. So it's all about figuring out how many inches you want your pleat to be. This is the center front. So if I want a one inch pleat, I'd have to add three inches to my fabric. So all you do is extend the front, the center front, by the amount of inches you want for your pleat. And why we add three inches? Because a pleat has three layers. So if you want a one inch pleat, it has to be folded three times in order for you to get it. So you add three inches. And you essentially cut it on fold. So if we're supposed to clean up our pattern, is the front of our pattern, it's a simple tan. So this would be where we'll sew along to get um, the pleat that is in the front. So that would be a pleat. And we have the shoulders that so match up with the back shoulders. We have arm hole, we have our darts and everything. So all we need to do now is pretty much cut out our pattern and make a simple tank top. <laughs>